stories here. I'll get through them quite quick, but they're fascinating. Let's start at the very beginning. It's now uh, the end of 1940, and uh, oh, sorry, I thought we were all here. No, that's okay. I was just looking right. for my other camera. It's now the end of 1940, and we have um, uh, something that's now called Enigma. We were listening to everything the German, uh, the Americans said. We were listening to everything the Germans said. The Americans were not on our side in 1940. Right. And, we were, and so we were listening to everything they said. And every day, Joseph Kennedy was saying to FDR, look, forget the British. They, they've lost this war. Look, they've lost Dunkirk. They've lost quite a lot of their army. They've lost it. Look, we can make a lot of money out of Germany while Germany invades Russia and they, you know, completes the invasion of Europe. Now, come on, look, let's back Hitler. And we sat and listened to this every day, seven days a week. And Churchill said, bloody fucking hell. <laughs> and in, anyway, so there he is, look, with no friends. The only right. friend we have, the, or the only friends we have, are Canada and Australia, and then later South Africa. But you know, we were without friends, and we were losing. We were losing bit by bit by bit. Yeah. And then one night, it was very, very foggy indeed. And Churchill woke up the next morning and was told that the whole of Coventry had been completely obliterated by the German Air Force. Now that meant that one of our two centres of heavy industry, heavy industry, yes. had gone. We only had Birmingham left. And, we, and Churchill thought, fucking hell, you know, we're now in dire shit in a way. He sent for the he sent for the uh, scientists and he said, how is it the Germans can destroy Coventry in thick fog and manage to completely obliterate it? Now, come on, how have they done it? You've got to, if, they, if, they, if they destroy Birmingham, well, heaven help us, we've lost the war. Very definitely, the Americans aren't coming to help. Well, the scientists said, we don't know, we'll go and bloody well find out then. So, uh, he, he said, if you, hadn't, if, you ha if you hadn't found out within 24 hours, I'm going to sack the lot of you and get some more in, anybody, <laughs> but look, come on. And they came back next day and uh, they said, well, I'm sorry, but we can't, we just can't believe the Germans have done it so accurately in thick fog. Ah, oh, said Churchill, now, come on. And anyway, luckily, some people with something up here were going through the prisoners of war camps and the camps where German nationals were locked up. We locked up German nationals because, look, we had nothing to lose by that. Lock them up, whole bloody lot, women, children, men, yeah. you name it. They went through those camps and they found in one, in, within 24 hours, they found one German scientist who was Jewish, thank goodness, Jewish, who was a radar expert. And they said, look, this has happened. He said, well, I, I look, I, I think we've got to start by photographing the whole of the, this part of the north coast of France. In other words, this is number, you see that box? There was, there was a <coughs> circular, what looked like a radar, but it wasn't radar, it was something else. Right. A circular dish on top of there until about a month ago. And there were six of them. This was number six. Five, four, three, two, one. Right. 70 miles up here. And he looked at the, the RAF within a day had photographed the whole of this part of the coast from really where the Americans were over at um, Utah, yes. what was Utah, 
run the way up to about a deer. Because that's right opposite, literally right opposite England. When they like that, not yes. like that or that. Right, they photographed it. And the scientist looked at that. that and he said, it's, it's something to do with these six bunk sort of, I don't know what you call that, shed on An wheels. installation or, or... Yeah. And he said, yeah, these are, th these are what I'm interested in. Look, we've got to take a low-level one of all of them, so I can really sort of, you know, I might be able to work out what's in there. And next day, when on day two, we, we photographed them again, and we were pretty good at that sort of thing. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, he said, mm, no, I, I've, got to, I've got to get in here. And how am I going to get in here? And and um, um, Churchill had you know a few people in the know about airborne forces uh, because he suspected we might have to land somewhere around here. And he said, "Look, I'll I'll, I'll give you Johnny Foss. Johnny Foss was a family friend, luckily, and he was a major in the parachute regiment. He was an Arnhem. Uh, that's right. Yeah, he was an Arnhem. Yeah, as a colonel. Yeah." Right, Johnny Frost, um, uh, Churchill sent for the commanding officer of one of, of, of the best parachute battalion who, who sent Johnny Frost, who had done very well in North Africa, yes. parachuting in what we now call Tunisia, Morocco. And Johnny Frost turned up at Churchill's office and, and was told by Churchill, look, we've got a German here, he's Jewish, he's... He is so vital to the survival of this country. You've got to train him. You've got to land him on whichever of these six sites he chooses. And, and you've, got to, you've probably got to bring back bits and pieces. Can you do it? Johnny said, yes, I can do it. Um, but I've got to train him how to jump out of an aeroplane. Because he's got to be alive when he gets down here. <laughs> and, and, and Churchill said, well, train him then. But for fuck's sake, get on with it. Look, how many men do you want to do this? And, and Johnny said, well, look, providing I got about 25, 30, that, that would do me. Because I can defend this. Yes. Say, pretend you're near Dieppe now. Yes. We are now standing near Dieppe. We're looking at that with the yes. circle on top of it. Right, parachute on that one and I'll tell you, because Johnny Frost is dead, look, he's come and gone between Downing Street while he's been planning and looking at photographs. He said, I've got one of those. It's on the top of a cliff and I've seen, I've got the Air Force to re-photograph it so close up and they found there's a path down the cliff like that. Just what we want. The, the, the German can take the bits out of the box, put them in whatever he wants, and wheel it down the cliff, and the Navy can take them off. OK, right. says Churchill, right. And he says to the, you know, the commanding officer, organise all that. Come on, we've got to get this done in the next few days. So they organised it, and they put the German on a parachute course for, for five days. He jumped out about nine times, and he was quite good at parachuting, actually, right. thank goodness. And Johnny and he, and I think it was, it, was, it, was, it was 24 men, landed up near Dieppe. It was number, this is number six, it was number two. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Number two, they jumped on yeah. with the cliff. And there was a nice beach under the cliff. So they parachuted down. The German got in that box. He was there for half an hour taking bits together. The Germans were taken by surprise by this. They, they guarded them, but not very well. The yeah. parachutists had spread out. Do you see what I mean? In, yeah. a, in an area rather like this. And they'd killed the few Germans who were here. And then the Germans, being efficient, flung in some more troops. But the, the, the German only needed 30, 35, 40 minutes in there before he saw what he wanted. And he had spanners and everything. You know, he could cut things up and, 
and he bought a pram with him. In those days, people had a, <laughs> if you were a mother, you had a pram like that. <laughs> <laughs> with great big wheels. Yes, yes. And he'd line the pram with polythene and and so he could put the bits in the pram and they wouldn't get damaged. And then uh, after 35 minutes in, in the box, he got what he wanted and he said, now I can work with this right well off. And uh, Johnny Frost had now lost about five men, but yes. that was all right. Now... Churchill had said to Johnny, look, if that German looks as if he's going to be captured, you have to give me your, 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 you, 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 you have to promise me that you will kill that man. Right. I can't, we can't let the Germans know we're on to this. Yes. Johnny said, okay, no, that's fine, I'll kill him, that's fine. Okay, anyway, they all went down the cliff, minus the dead parachutists. The Navy, thank God, were there in landing craft. They all piled into the landing craft. The landing craft found a destroyer about 10 miles out. They all transferred to the much faster destroyer. They all got home to Portsmouth. The, 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 the German, within three days, had discovered how, it, how that works. Now, look, I'm not a radar scientist, but what, what, what he discovered was that they were, it wasn't radar, they were firing a, a, a sort of a line of dots and dashes. And the dots and dashes, where they crossed, the German Air Force would fly ah. down the dots and dashes like this. And where they crossed, they dropped the bombs in the thick fog and then go home again. Right. That's good. And what the German scientists did, here's, here are the dots and dashes, right, move them. <laughs> are you with me? Yes. Uh -huh. And from there onwards, it, it, it was only a matter of a hundred miles, so you had yeah. a certain amount of room. The, the, German, the Germans from there onwards dropped their bombs in the English Channel quite right. a lot, right. but certainly for the next year they did anyway. Okay? So all the bombs went in the channel. Thank God Birmingham was saved. Otherwise we would have, um, yeah, we, we'd have lost the war. There's no so doubt about it. How was the triangulation? I don't understand. Well, the, it sounds like the, how the British foiled it or how the Germans no, so it was, But it was like, so what happens is, the, the, were the lines of the dots and dashes, sorry, I didn't quite follow... Oh, what, there what are you, radio lights? Was, it was, no, they're bringing there's radio waves on different frequencies. Okay. Yeah, a radio wave. Okay, okay, that, okay, yeah, okay. a radio wave. Yeah. Okay. Are you with me? Yes. And the, other, but, and the question is, I don't understand how the Germans didn't know that the British were onto this plan. If if in 1940 all of a sudden one of these gets attacked and there's a bunch of soldiers killed and five paratroopers killed, they must have known that you guys... Yeah, they, they you know. knew, they thought we were just raiding because when he... Sorry, I haven't, I'm trying to sort of, you know, okay. save time. Sorry. All right, I'll, I'll go on a bit then. Look, when, when the German had got all he wanted, yeah. Johnny's men put a, a, quite a lot of explosives under that and blew it apart. Right. No one could see who'd what been in and what they'd done. Yeah, well, think, okay. It was all demolished. Right. right. So Are it looked like a there? sabotage. What? It looked, it looked like, like it was like just sabotage. a sabotage. Yes. I mean, yeah. it, I mean, nobody could really guess that. Right. And, and Johnny was going to kill that German if it looked as if we'd lost it. Right. So right. It, you know, nothing could, I mean, nothing could get through. Did the only you, thing that I got mean, through yeah. was... But Joseph Kennedy, the next day, said the British have made a raid on on northern France. Right. And now to FDR, look, come on, look, abandon the British. You, you, you know, a small raid like that's not going to help them very much. He didn't know what was happening. And was, right. we wouldn't tell anybody. Yes. Uh, nobody. And... Um, you know, yet again, you know, FDR was sort of being shoved into the German camp. So there we are. We've now saved Birmingham. Right. That's it. Did and you it, say you knew Johnny Frost? Well, yeah, yes, Johnny Frost is a family friend. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I'm so bloody old that really I'm, you know, I, I've met all these people. Do, do you come from the right class, Oliver? Sorry, what? Do you come from the right class to know these people? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's the old boy network. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right. yeah, it's the old boy network. But, you know, it's useful. 
Yeah. So there we are. Totally that's that. useful. So we've this the, we've 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 talked about it, um, Joseph Kennedy. Yeah. Eventually, Churchill managed to agree yes. with FDR yes. that he'd replace him. And I, I've forgotten the name of the man who came after him. I do know the name. I used to know. It, but it'll come to me. It will come back to me. But, you know, yeah. I'm getting old now. He, he was much more pro-British. Yeah, he was...